It's good to see everybody. Um, there's a lot of faces that I don't know, so I think I've, I've tried to meet everybody, but if I haven't, my name's Moses. I'm the pastor here at Revolution, and we're just happy as a team, as a family, uh, to welcome you all. Um, I want to just tell you, uh, our church is, is a little bit different than, yeah, than most. Um, around here, uh, our church, we, we, we have like a vision statement, and it just says that we're a gospel-centered, culture-creating community bringing beauty to the world. And so um, what you're going to experience here tonight is, is, I think, an expression of that. It's not what churches normally do. Um, I'm not quite sure that when Jesus was at that wedding celebration turning water into wine, I'm not quite sure they were listening to rock and roll, but I think that if Jesus was alive and well here in the flesh, I think he'd probably want to hang out here tonight, to be honest with you. I do. I think he likes to party. It's cool. The water to wine part of the, of the feast will be in a little while. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, I, I want to uh, just welcome you all. And I want to thank everyone up here for coming and, and blessing us tonight and expressing their gift. All of us have a gift that God gave us, and this is their gift, and they want to share it with you tonight and bring that beauty to the world. So uh, it's, it's going to be a long night. Uh, we're going to have lots of music. Uh, we have a baby dedication coming up here in a little while towards the end of the evening. Uh, after we sing, I don't know, 10, 11 songs, uh, we're going to be transitioning our evening into some uh, what we normally do here, which is just some irregular praise and worship music. I know that you'll be blessed and enjoy that. Uh, like I said, we're going to have a baby dedication. I'll, I'm going to share uh, briefly with you from God's Word. Um, and we're going to our, take our offering, too. If this is not your church, and, this is, and, and you're going to be like, oh, my goodness, they're asking me for money. That's why they invited us. That's not what it is. This is, for, this is for our family. And we're Christians, and we love Jesus, and we love people, and we want to, we want to be generous and give so that the kingdom of God can advance. And so that's why we're doing that. So, but by no means feel pressured by that. If you want to give something, you can, but don't worry about that. So anyway, um, I just want to thank you. We have, um, we have someone who made some pies tonight. And yeah, Paul. So um, I want to I want to give away three of them right now. I want to ask, um, let's give let's give a pie away to the the fam the the husband and wife that have been married the longest. And I don't know who that would be. So if you've been married more than twenty, why don't you just yell it out? Yeah. Anybody? How many is that? Twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah. <laughs> Never ask the husband, right? How many? 22. That's still good, right? That's still good. All right. How many? 27. Okay. 20. 20. That's good. That's good. Very good. Anyone else? 27 gets it, huh? All right. So there's a pie. All right. Who, now, who's been married the least amount of time? Like, Grayson, you haven't been married yet. Grayson and Harry raised their hand at the same time. What's up? We're a fun church, but not that fun. <laughs> okay, who's been married for a short period of time? Joseph, now come on. Come on. Hold on, what's that? How long have you been married? A year and a half, okay. That's good, though, that's good. They made it a year and a half, yeah. Breaking the odds, breaking the odds. So we, anything less than a year and a half? Joseph, stop. <laughs> you want a pie? Just ask, man. <laughs> Golly. Okay, so we got a pie here for a year and a half. All right. Um, okay, here's another one. You get a pie if you would share a crazy honeymoon story. Keep it clean. <laughs> crazy honeymoon story, anyone? Oh, Frankie. <laughs> I know. Hand, who thinks handing Frank a microphone is dangerous? <laughs> I don't know if this is hello. <laughs> this could be bad. Hello. This is uh, number two. Can you put on number two? Hello. Is it, can you promise he's going to keep it clean, Paula? Frank. Clean and short. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Frankie G. I'm a recovered Christian trying to get yeah, a recovering world preacher. going man. Uh, Paula came one day and looked at me and blinked her green eyes and I said to my friends, I think I'm getting married. And 
So we got married, and then we went on our honeymoon, and we went to a plantation in Georgia called Rosswood, and we were there, and it's an authentic plantation, and they have authentic beds with the canopies and supposed to be fake dresses beds. and everything, and there were other couples there too, and she wouldn't let me look through the keyhole to the next <laughs> couple next door. I had a big old keyhole. I wanted to check through the keyhole. She said, "No, no, check it." I said, "All right." So we decided to go out for nightlife in Georgia. If you've been to Georgia, you know there's no nightlife there. And, uh, that it, was since it was Mississippi. No yeah, no. well, Mississippi, whatever. <laughs> so we go down and we're, we're in the, the hot tub together, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden I hear, ah, ah, ah. I thought he said it was going to be clean. Wait, 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 give me a minute, give me a minute. So it's this peacock. I'm from New York. I don't know, I don't know about peacocks, right? And he's flapping his wings and I'm going, What's up here, you know? I'm trying to be romantic as a honeymoon, you know? So then a cat comes, and it has six toes, six paws, like, you know, six, not, not a regular, six thumbs or whatever. And I'm going to myself, what's up here? Is this like, you know? So, okay, so we get in the car, because we couldn't get romantic. Everything was interrupting us. So we go for the nightlife, and we find this building uh, like a granite building, we go in and in cycle when the light goes back and forth, we go in and the lights go back and forth, and this guy comes and he goes, can I help you? And he's got one blue eye and one paisley eye, and he's, he's like tall, right? And he goes, what do you like? And I said to myself, I think we better go back to the, to the <laughs> plantation, though. Know? So when we go back in the hallway, there's this guy, rocking back and forth, and he looked like a German U-boat commander, you know? And this is all, we're in love, so we're taking it all in, praising the Lord. So we go to breakfast, and the guy that owned the, the plantation was a general in Desert Shield. He was the general's general of Kelly Shagalatsky, the other general. And I thought there was some kind of espionage going on, you know? <laughs> so this is my weird story of our honeymoon, and I'm glad to be here. Thanks for sharing it. <laughs> can, can anybody top that? No. <laughs> huh? Honeymoon story, and I'm even married. All right, all right. So I guess, the, I guess, I guess we can give Frankie and Paula a, a, a pie. Um, anyway. And we're thankful that they're both here. You know, that's really a good thing. All right. This is what we're going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a moment. I want to pray with you. I want to thank God for, for this gathering and for our food. And then uh, ladies first, Paul. <laughs> ladies first are going to go and get their food and sit and enjoy. Okay? Awesome. Let's take a moment. Father, thank you for letting us uh, get together here tonight. And uh, we have come to, to enjoy each other, and we've come to enjoy good food, and we've come to enjoy good music. Uh, we've just come to enjoy all that you would have for us. All things are made from you. All good gifts come from you. I thank you for the, for the uh, music and the variety and, and the food and how it's going to the flavors and how it's going to taste. Thank you for giving us the ability to taste such wonderful food. It's all because of you. And Lord, we just want to celebrate tonight. We have a reason to celebrate, Lord. Uh, you, you, have, you have shed and, and poured your life and your love down upon us, and we are so grateful to receive that. And tonight we want to celebrate that in this gathering. Lord, we, we, wanna, we wanna enjoy you though. Lord, we don't wanna just sing songs. We don't wanna just to, to taste good food, but Lord, we wanna taste and see that the Lord is good. And we want you to be here with us, Lord. We wanna celebrate with you all that you are. So Lord, thank you for letting us gather. Thank you for this food. Thank you for the music. Thank you for sending your son to go to the cross for our forgiveness and salvation. And it's in his beautiful name, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Ladies first, please. Hey, John. Take your 
shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground. Holy ground, you're on holy ground. Take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground. Cause I am the Lord your God. I think I need to find a new church. <laughs> you know, I gotta, Frankie, 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 Frankie. Seriously, Frankie. He, how many, how many days? He just got out of rehab today for he had pneumonia, right? What? Okay, no, but he just got out today for the first time. This is the first time he's been out of his bed and he's up here dancing. He put, <laughs> he's got a. He's got to go back in after, after we're done tonight. He's got to go back. Like, he's putting you all the same. What are y'all doing up there in your seats? He's up here dancing with his cane. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Back there laughing like crazy. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awesome. Everyone eat enough? How about mixed bag? Awesome. Awesome. Well, I wanted to, uh, I wanted, I wanted to take a few minutes uh, of your evening, and uh, I just wanted to introduce you to somebody. Uh, you know, it's, it's Valentine's Day, so I guess, you know, it's about love, right? We have love, we've got marriages, we've got um, people dating. Uh, ever, anyone ever go on a blind date in the house? Anyone ever go on a blind date? Did that ever go well? Has anyone ever had a good blind date? No? Well... You go into the blind date, you don't know anything about the person except the lies your friend told you, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you about someone. I'm going to tell you about someone. I'm not going to lie about him. I'm not going to lie about him. He's a really dear, dear friend of mine. I want to introduce you to him. Um, and I, as, I, as I got ready to, to come out here, I, I just kind of had a lot of things going through my mind about what, what exactly to say, how to introduce uh, this person to you. Um, I want, to, I want to share with you my God. I want to tell you about my God. And, uh, and, and it might not be a, a, a Valentine's Day message, you know, but I want to tell you about, about my God. Uh, if we're in love, if you're in love with someone, don't you want that person to just be there for you, right? To, and, and, if, and, if you're in, and if someone's in love with you don't, you, don't you desire to be there for that person? like to have their back, you know what I mean? To always be there, thick and thin. You know what I'm, say you know what I'm saying, right? So um, I want to tell you about my God. Um, last, last week, uh, on, on Sunday night, I had the opportunity to, to preach at another church, this little church over in Yalaha. It's called Yalaha Community Church. And I want to give you a little history about this little place. It was, it, it was established in 1875. A group of people got together and started a church. They've had a, a building blew down. A building blew down. Hurricane, hurricane. Now they get another one. It was built in the 30s. It's this little place. It looks just like this except miniature. And it might fit maybe, I don't know, 60, 75 people if they were slam packed in there. Well, they, 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 they closed the church about a year and a half ago, I guess. The, the old man that was preaching, he finally got too old and too sick, and he handed the, the trustees the keys, and he just said, listen, I'm, I'm just done. I just can't do this anymore. And so they closed the church. Well, um, one of the, the, the trustees, uh, he decided after seeing, uh, he lived in that community. His backyard touches the church's backyard. And, and after seeing some folks right in the immediate area, some younger folks that, that really needed Jesus, he said, you know, we need to really reopen this church and we need to reach this community with the love of Christ you know and so they opened up this church and what they decided to do was that that most of the people that go there were already members of another church in Tiberias a, a fairly large one with an older congregation and so what they were going to do is going to open up the church and they're going to come and they're going to have guest pastors come in and just preach whatever God laid in their heart so so they asked if I would do that and so I said yeah sure I'll do that once in a while I'll go in there and do it so, so these people, and, and when I first went, I've been there three times now, when I first went, it was 14 people. That's tough to do, to preach to a room of 14 people. But, I, but we did it, and, and we got through it. So, so now the, 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 they have a one-year anniversary. They said, would you come back and preach? And I said, sure. So, so I, I'm going in like a week before, and I'm like, Lord, what is it that I'm to talk to these people about? Like, I don't know them like I know you. We, I asked God, what book of the Bible should we preach through here at Revolution? And we just do that. 
and I'm honest with you, and I'm, and I'm up front with you, and transparent, and if I have to hammer, I'm hammer, and you guys just keep bringing friends. And that's awesome, but I don't know these people, so I'm a little bit like up in the air. I don't know what to do, and so I'm praying. I'm like, God, what is it you want? What is it you want? <clears throat> well, Monday before the Sunday comes, and we, some of us come in here, and we fast, and we pray all day long, and so I, I'm doing just that, and I'm sitting here, and at the top of my list for prayers is, what about Yalaha? And so I'm, I'm asking the Lord with the, with the people that were here. We prayed, and I said again, Lord, what do, I, what do you want to tell these people? And so he gives me the message. On my way home, I'm, I'm on my motorcycle. I'm going down Lakeshore, and, it's, and he gives me the message. And then I get home, and that same Spirit of God that led me to that also led me to the Scripture verse that was just about, it was a hammer. And it was just this, that the, that the Lord Jesus had revealed to me that soon I will be leaving this earthly body. So soon I'm going to die, Peter said. Uh, but, but so I'm going to work really hard so that you remember these things that I preach long after I'm gone. And so here's a congregation filled with older folks, and I'm going to go in there, and God says, go tell them they're going to die soon. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, I, you could put me in front of the citrus bowl, and, and I'll preach the gospel with no fear, but these people scared the daylights out of me. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, they had the largest crowd they've ever had. 35 people showed up to this place, right? It was awesome, right? So, so, so listen, so, 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 now listen, I know I'm going to say things that are going to tick them off because I'm going to challenge them to stop coming to this church like a supplement to what you call your real church and, and, and waste our time coming in and sucking in instead of giving out, right? We want to share the gospel with the community. And so I'm about to crush these people. Basically, I'm going to stand up before them and go, you know what? Y'all suck. You're doing it wrong. Get it right. Like, I'm about to say that, and I know I'm about to say it, right? And they didn't give me permission. They just said, tell whatever it's on your heart. So, so, so listen, that day, I'm praying. It's Sunday afternoon. Now, you got to know, if you know me, you know my voice is, are, is, is still not right. On Sunday, I, I had nothing. I had no voice at all. So I get up there and I, to begin with, and I was like, this was, was already funny. So that was my day going in. But I'm praying that day. I'm like, okay, Lord, I know what you're giving me is stern. I don't want to tell these people. They're all in their 70s and 80s. I'm a young punk to them. They don't know me from a hole in the wall. And I'm supposed to tell them to totally change the way they're living. Don't work 65 years really hard and then save up to spend the last 10 to die. I'm saying work hard for 65 and then start working harder to spread the gospel to the world. So I'm telling them to change their whole way of thinking. And I'm nervous, right? So I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, listen, would you please, and this just what hit me, so I prayed it. I was like, Lord, would you somehow in these hymns that they, because I don't know anything about hymns, right? And so, so I know like two hymns. But I said, Lord, somehow in the, in the hymns that they sing, would you please Give me some help. Say some words in these hymns that will like give them ears to hear your voice. Not my voice, not the young punk who yells, but, but your voice. So I, that was my specific prayer. Lord, give, them, give me some verbiage in a hymn that tells them to have ears to hear your voice. So I get into the church, and I'm still kind of nervous, and I go up, and there's this guy, Don, he plays the guitar behind the hymns, and, he's, and it's like five minutes before the service is about to start, and he's got his hymnal open, and he's strumming through, and he's looking through, and then he got this little board, you know, the old-fashioned board that said what the offering was, and, and the hymn, you know what I'm saying, old school, right, Grandma's Church. So they, they put that up there, and they got the songs listed, he puts the songs up, and we're getting ready to start, and so I said, listen, Don, would you do me a favor? I know you don't normally do this, but would you, um, would you just strum? Because I feel like we need to pray. I don't know what we're going to pray about, but I feel like we need to pray. Could you just strum when I come up to pray? Yeah, I'll do that. So we start singing hymns. First one's Blessed Assurance. I got no help there. The second one, right? <laughs> Listen to this. This is crazy. And, and forgive me if I don't have the verbiage exactly right because I'm not a King James guy. I don't know the these and thous, but hear me out. First line, number 381 in this hymnal. Give them eyes to see the truth. Give them ears to hear my voice as I sit silently waiting before me. Declare your will to me. Like, I'm sitting there going, no way. And I'm freaking out and I'm pouring out crying. And they're like, okay, time to preach. I'm like, are you kidding me? 
I'm like hysterically crying like that's the God that I serve. That's the God who is there for me. That's the God who loves me and promised he would never leave me and forsake me. And he showed up strong. And that's the God I want you to know. That's the God I want to introduce to you tonight. I want you to know that God. So listen, that aside, my last thing I want to share with you. I know that Valentine's Day is not just about marriage. But marriage is on our radar screen here at Revolution Church because we've had a lot of, a lot of failure in marriages here. There's 50% failure in marriages in the church. Not just, the, you know, not just this church, but Christian churches, and it's bad. We know better, don't we? Come on. Amen? There's a way. We could figure it out, right? We have a Bible. He says what to do if we're living out, and we don't. And so our church, we want to help that. And so we're starting some things. Uh, the Tuesday night men's group, we're going to meet. Starting this Tuesday night, we're going to do a study called The Man and His Marriage. And I invite every man in this place, whether you're married or not, to be a part of that, to come Tuesday nights at 6.30 and sit. It's, I think, a six or seven week journey. And it will give you the tools so that your family can flourish. If you've been a failure, as I have in the past, it will help. Okay, so please be a part of that. But radar, it's on the radar screen, marriage. And I just want to share something with you. As I was reading the scriptures the other day, uh, getting ready for, to meet with you, uh, I just came across, this is just where the Lord led me, okay? And I just want to share this with you. It's over in Genesis, right at the beginning of the Bible. And he's, God is creating heaven and earth. And in Genesis chapter 1, he just says, 20, verse 26, he said, Let us create man in our image to be like us. That's what God said. And so the Imago Dei, the Imago Dei means we are made in the image of God. In all of creation, there's only one thing that is in the image of Almighty God, and it's us. Okay, it's us. But he also goes on to say in verse 27, it says, so God created human beings, man, in his own image, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And so what, I, I stopped when I read that. For, you know, many of us have read that many times, but I stopped, and I just let it marinate for a little while. And I started thinking about it. You know, my wife sometimes drives me crazy, and I know that I drive her crazy, and I think we can all probably say that about our present or maybe even our past spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend. And I understand that. But you know what? Marriage is not about just your happiness. Marriage, really, when God takes two, the man and the woman, and he brings them together as one flesh, what he's doing is far greater than what's going on in your house. What he's doing is he's bringing together the greatest singular expression of Almighty God in the universe. Man and woman together, he created them. He didn't make clones. He made us different. Who admits, men, who admits that women are way different than us? Amen. Now, ladies, how many admit that men are way different than you? We're crazy. Would you say men are crazy? Guys, do you think that the ladies are crazy? Yeah, yeah right? Okay, we all are. We're all crazy. But the greatest single expression of Almighty God on the planet is when man and woman come together with all their craziness, and that's how he is seen to the world in the greatest way. And so he brings us together. Now he goes on, and now, now you remember the story Adam and Eve, right? The first couple, right? And so that's what he's talking about here. But in verse uh, 18 of chapter 2, he goes on, he says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So he sees Adam, and he makes Eve, and she is just right for him. Now, I start thinking again. Is my wife just right for me? It, it, what, listen, I, I, listen. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't know who said that, but sometimes she ticks me off. And sometimes she disappoints me. And sometimes she doesn't live up to my standard, right? And if you're the wife, if you're the wife, and Meredith could come up here and grab a mic and say the same thing, that sometimes I don't live up to her standard that she has for me. Maybe I'm not quite the man now that I was when she married me. I got 25 pounds around my midsection that I didn't have when we walked the aisle. 
So maybe I disappoint her. Maybe I'm not exactly right. So we can't say that, that, that Adam and me are the same thing because God like stitched together Eve perfectly like he had his hand on that and she didn't have a choice. He didn't have a choice. There was only one woman, right? So yeah, it's the perfect woman for him. Why? Because God stitched her together perfectly for him and she's the only one. So that's pretty obvious. Well, that's not the case for me because I have free will and I get to pick and choose. And so I pick a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a spouse, right? That's what we get to do. So I pick a woman and I marry her and then she disappoints me. God made Eve just right for Adam. And you might not think that your spouse is just right for you. But let's not forget the epic failure of Adam's wife. But yet, God says, even with epic failure, that she was just right for him. That should get an amen. Because our spouse is going to fail us. Our boyfriend and our girlfriend are going to fail us. We are going to, to put standards upon them that God Almighty wouldn't even put on them. And when they don't live up to it, what do we do? I'm out. I want to be happy. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. But lest you think you're any different than Adam, just because you might think that God made Eve just right for Adam, but he didn't make Meredith just right for me. I beg to differ. See, Proverbs 18.22 tells us that if a man finds a wife, he finds a treasure and has found favor with God. Men, it's Valentine's Day. I'm setting you up like there's no tomorrow. Seriously. Listen, if a man has found a wife, he has found a treasure. I am definitely going to find a new church. Come on now. If a man has found a wife, he's found a treasure. Yeah. He has found favor with God. So what does that tell us? He's found favor with God means that God brought that specific woman into your life. Just right for you. Even if there's epic failure. And the same is true with the opposite. If the man has found favor with God by bringing the woman to him, then you could say the same for the opposite, right? The woman has found favor because she has been brought to a specific man. And so even if there's failure, Christians, just know this. When your spouse fails you at some expectation you've levied on them, that doesn't mean that they're not just right for you. That challenge, that failure that you've experienced might be just what God has brought into your life on purpose to build character into you. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to stand before these precious and beautiful people to share the truth of your word. I thank you, Lord, personally for my beautiful wife. And Lord, even though sometimes she does things that, that not to my standard, maybe not the way I wanted it to work out, but Lord, help me to realize tonight as I speak these words to everybody else that, Lord, you have made her just the way she is and you have brought her into my life. You have made her just right for me. And Lord, I pray that same thing for everyone who is in this room right now, who has had the blessing of having a spouse right now in their life. That Lord, help them to realize the truth of your word that's not based on feeling or emotion, but based on truth. That if a man has found a wife, he has found a treasure, and he has found favor with God. Lord, help us to, to, to give an allowance for fault in our love relationships. 
Help us to be, to be uh, Philippians 2 Christians, the Christian that puts others above ourselves, to consider our spouse, to, to husbands, to, to love our spouse as Christ loved the church, that he would lay his life down for her. And Lord, help the, the wives in our church to be biblical Ephesians uh, five wives who would submit to their husbands in all things as unto the Lord. Help us to be those type of people so that the world will see something beautiful. Our, our mission statement, Lord, is a, we're a gospel-centered, culture-creating community bringing beauty to the world. Lord, help us here. Help us, part of bringing beauty to the world, that we would bring uh, great numbers of, of, hey, I've been married for 50 years. I've been married for 60 years. I've been married for 70 years. Help us to be different in a world that's based on our own personal happiness. Let us view marriage as an opportunity for holiness. I thank you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
right? Because there's seven billion people out there and they need some help. They need some help. So what I'm asking you is would you do the same thing? Would you partner with Jared and Candy and to, would you endeavor by God's grace and your best abilities to teach baby Lexi about the Lord by presenting his word to her at every opportunity that you get? Would you do that? Would you partner with them? Would you raise your hand if you'd do that? Awesome. Let me ask you this too, Christ followers, and this is a big one, but <laughs> would you come babysit? Yeah, he said. Would you, <laughs> would you do that? I asked Jared and Candy this question. I'm going to ask you too. Would you, by God's grace and with the very best of your ability, model Christ-like character before Lexi as she comes into the church on weekends or whenever else or when she sees you out and about or any interaction that she might have with you would you do your very best again by God's grace to live with Christ-like character before her that she might know and love the Lord would you do that raise your hand all right now with your hands held high held high if you said I would you like I would like for you to point your hand it's kind of weird if you're not a Christian but point your hand towards Lexi and I want to pray I want to pray over her now. Lord, we are all thinking about you. We're thinking about two. We're thinking about you, and we're thinking about Lexi. Lord, we ask for your great blessing upon her. The mommy and daddy that you've chosen for her are good people that love you. But this world is rough, this world is tough, and this world is influential. And they need all the help they can get. So Lord, I pray that you would be their sword and shield, that you would protect them, that you would help them, that you would fill them with your spirit, that you'd help them to be a Christ-like mommy and a Christ-like daddy before Lexi all the days of their lives. Lord, there's also Serenity and Bibi in this family, and I pray for them as well, that you'd help them to lead by example, that Lexi would grow up to know you and love you because she saw you in the people that you surrounded her with. Help us all as a family here of faith to walk with character before her that she might see you, to teach her your word and not neglect to tell her of your wonderful deeds and your magnificent power. They acknowledge now that she is not theirs, that she is yours, your creation. You created her, you will sustain her, and Lord willing, now all of us, we pray that you will save her that she might be with you forever. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I love you. In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love I know my debt is paid there's nothing that can separate my heart